look at the book of Hebrews it's going to be chapter number six Hebrews chapter number six I'm going to read from verse number 16 to verse number 20 and then we'll talk about uh a few things there maybe in the next 15 minutes maybe before we read hebrews chapter number six let's begin with first corinthians chapter number 13 you write these verses down uh so you can follow through later chapter number 13 and verse number 13 the bible declares and now abideth faith a hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity uh, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and he says three things abide. Number one, uh, faith. Number two, hope. Number three, charity. But he says charity is the greatest among these. And charity is the King James uh, version of the word love. I want to use that verse for the next probably three weeks today, next week and the other week to talk about what I call the abiding triad. The abiding three-corded string. Glory to God. A triad in the language of music is that chord that is picked out of three notes. The trichotomy of it. The three notes. 
that cause a chord. The do, the mi, and the so. Glory to God. The soprano, the tenor, and the alto. The do, the mi, and the so. The triad. When I look at this verse, I see that God is weaving a triad out of the nature of God to be revealed to humanity as faith, hope, and love. When I see this, I see the abiding triad. As the Bible say, now abideth these three. They abide. And ladies and gentlemen, in a situation like we're going through right now, in the season that we're going through like now, we must commit ourselves to those things that the scriptures say abide. Glory to God. We will be able to abide, to be strong, to be united, to be fruitful, to be productive in spite of the season we are going through if we will hold on to that which abides. So I will talk about faith, I will talk about hope, and I'll talk about charity. But today I want to begin by talking about hope. And the scripture is in the uh, Hebrews chapter number 6, uh, verse number 16, the Bible says, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation uh, is to them an end of all strife. Verse number 17. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto, unto the heirs of uh, the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Look at the next part of that verse. Uh, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which we hope we have for the anchor of the soul, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Lord, I pray that you bless your word in the next few minutes and cause this to come alive in our hearts to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the Bible says that God, because he could swear by nobody greater, he swore I mean, made an oath, a confirmation to them. Uh, it says, for men swear, verily swear by a greater. And an oath uh, for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of his promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. God confirmed his promise to the people of God by an oath. The heirs of his promise, which is you and me. God made an oath by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Why did God do this? So that we may have a strong consolation. Who are they that receive this consolation? Those who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. In other words, he's trying to say that you and me have run to the hope. We have run to the promise. We have run uh, to be able to receive a consolation. We have run to refuge so that we may lay a hold upon the things that have been said before us. And he says... This that we run to is the hope. And it says this hope we have as an anchor for the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Glory to God. And it says it is that which entereth within the veil. It is the hope that entereth within the veil. Which hope we have as an anchor for the soul. It is both sure and it is steadfast. Ladies and gentlemen, in Christ Jesus we have received a hope which is the consolation of our lives. We have received a hope represented by Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. In a state of life that is hopeless in a state of life that is, seems to be without hope we have a hope that is both sure and steadfast it is a hope also that entereth within the veil somebody say amen now he describes that hope as the anchor for the soul in other words our hope as an anchor an anchor an anchor the definition of an anchor if you may if, uh, those of you that may not know is that piece of heavy metal uh, that is thrown within the sea goes to the bottom of the sea so that it may be able to hold uh, the sheep of the boat to be stable and to be confirmed with confidence glory hallelujah uh, the scripture says that that hope is the anchor that we have for the soul it is something or someone that provides stability and confidence in otherwise uncertain situations 
in uncertain situations that we are right now, in uncertain li un uh, living conditions that we are right now, in uncertain economic conditions that we have right now, in uncertain uh, health situations that we have right now, you and I must hold first to the anchor of our soul, which is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The Bible declares in the book of Psalms that why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? In other words, the raging of the sea is the raging of the conditions around us, the raging of the peoples around us, the raging of the uh, uh, situations around us. In the rage of the situations around us, you and me must hold on to the anchor, glory to God, which is both sure and steadfast. It's the anchor that entereth within the veil. That anchor is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The Swahili word is the word bandari. It is the heavy weight metal of substance that goes down to the bottom of the sea that as much as the waves may rage and the sea may be tumultuous and the, and the waves may blow the ship and the boat is going to be steady because it is holding on to that anchor now the bible says in ephesians chapter number two and verse number 12 that at that time you were without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, as strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Listen to what Paul is telling the church in Ephesus there. That when we were without God, we were without hope. When we were without hope, we were without God. Without hope and without God in this world. Without God and without hope in this world. In other words, any time we live a hopeless life, we have let go of the, of the sovereign grace of God that has been been made available for us in our lives anytime we live without hope anytime we live without god you are living as an alien away from the commonwealth of israel but the scripture says that's what we used to be we are no longer that we are no longer without god we are no longer without hope but we have this hope which is the anchor of our soul but sure and steadfast glory to god somebody put your hands together and give god a praise for that hallelujah that word in the greek hope is the word el peace which comes from the from the root of that elbow which means to anticipate and to anticipate usually with pleasure in other words right now when everybody is afraid and anxious and broken and afraid and so fearful we must activate the hope which is the anchor for the soul within our hearts that we will be able to anticipate with pleasure anticipate the miracles of god anticipate the good works of god in your life anticipate the coming to pass of the promise of God in your life. Hallelujah. We must anticipate. We must help her in. We must anticipate with pleasure. When you go to sleep, don't think you're going to die tomorrow. When you go to sleep, don't think you will not have nothing to eat tomorrow. When you go to sleep, don't think you are jobless and hopeless and without hope in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jesus as the anchor of our soul. We have Jesus who is the hope. The hope we have in Christ Jesus is the anchor anchor of our soul but sure and steadfast glory to god did you did you did you did you did you show us the anchor eric there the anchor but sure and steadfast glory to god let me give you a text in uh, romans chapter number four and verse number 18 this is the story of faithful abraham we know how abraham went through very serious shaking uh uh starving situations as he believed god that god would give him an heir of his promise the bible declares in verse number 18 romans chapter number four that abraham hoped uh, against hope and he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be this man believed god and he believed a hope against hope the same hope that we have in christ jesus that as he promised so shall it be in your life that's what it means to believe hope against hope that although the situation is speaking a different language your heart is hoping against hope that everything god has promised in your life shall come to pass just as he promised glory to god against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be i know between me and you you know that abraham has become the father of our faith not only the father of israel 
Israel, but he's become the father of our faith, that everybody that believes in faith is called the seed and the child of Abraham, because that man believed against the odds of this day. I wonder what's going to happen in your life if you choose to hold on to the hope of God in your life. I wonder the multiplication and the abundance and the open door that is going to come in your life because you've hold on to the promise of the Son of God in your life. As you hold on to a hope that is immovable, as you hold on to a hope that is unchanging, as you hold on to a hope that is unbroken, unbrokeable, and unbroggable. Glory, hallelujah. Say whatever they may around the world. If our hope shall be in God, if our hope shall be in Christ, these three abide. Faith, hope, and love. Glory to God. And today I want us to open our hearts to the promise of that hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Number two. Number one, it's an anchor. Number two, the anchor is both sure and steadfast. The anchor is joined with a link and that chain link runs to hold on to the boat. It is a heavy uh, piece of substance that when it settles down with the anchor, it doesn't matter how the boat is going to be blown, it will be stable because it has a link that is holding on to the firm foundation. Show me the picture of a chain link, Eric, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, this anchor that we have in Christ is holding on to us with a link. I mean, this is just a piece of iron but you can imagine in the spirit you are connected with God by the Holy Ghost you have a strong shield of the promise of God I mean we are connected with an anchor so immovable that the waves of the sea may blow all manner of doctrines and conspiracies may blow around the world I mean they may say this and say that and take us right and take us left and take us north and take us south take us west and take us east when it is all said and done we will be stable in the Lord. We will be both sure and steadfast. Somebody say hallelujah because we are connected with the anchor which is the hope we have in Christ Jesus the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I mean the Bible say he took uh, uh, it on his own body he took our sin uh, on the tree that we may die to sin and live unto righteousness and by his stripes we have been healed. Somebody say amen. You are healed before that disease ever comes in your neighborhood. I say you are healed by the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Your sin is already taken care of by the blood of the Lamb. You have not been redeemed by corruptible things such as silver and gold but by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Ladies and gentlemen, as I talk to you right now, you must have the faith in your heart that you are anchored. Hallelujah. You are anchored in the hope we have in Christ. I mean you are anchored. Let the waves blow. Let the winds blow. I mean let the situations come you are anchored when everything is said and done the storm will be over and you will still be standing because you are anchored in the hope that we have in Christ Jesus Romans chapter number 15 and verse number 4 the Bible declares whatsoever things were written at full time were written for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope somebody say might have hope come on somebody say might have hope these things were written hallelujah so that in the scriptures through the patience and in the scriptures we might have hope so that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we might have hope that's why i'm preaching here today it's not just another sunday wonderful sunday sermon after four four months of being away uh, to get excited and happy i'm giving you the scriptures because these things were written so that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we might have hope put your hand in your chest and say i have hope because that hope is the anchor for your soul. That's why we stay in the scriptures. That's why we hold on to patience by faith. That's why we hold on to the promise of our Father. Glory to God. Because these things were written so that through patience and the comfort of scriptures, you and me may have hope, which hope is for sure the anchor of our soul. Number three, he says this hope, it is this hope that entereth within the veil. He says it entereth and reaches out to that within the veil. Glory to God. The, the anchor that we have, which is hope in Christ Jesus, 
just like the anchor goes to the bottom of the sea the anchor that we have which is hope in Christ Jesus reaches out to the bottom of all things and he explains to us the bottom of all things as that which is behind the veil or within the veil if you may not know what is that that is behind the veil that is the ark of the covenant that is the mercy seat show me this, the picture eric that is the mercy seat when you get to the veil in the temple you go beyond the veil you find the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat where the blood of the sacrifice would be sprinkled there so that redemption and sanctification and renewal and forgiveness of sin may be able to happen that hope is holding on to the ark of the covenant it's holding on to the mercy seat where the blood of jesus has been sprinkled for us for our redemption for our hope for our renewal for our rejuvenation for our regeneration somebody say amen it goes beyond the veil it touches base with the mercy seat glory to god it touches base with the mercy seat it touches base with the blood of the lamb ladies and gentlemen the anchor of our soul which is hope in christ jesus is not just swinging in the air it's not just trying to find a place to settle it is settled on the foundations of all foundations which is the mercy seat the ark of the covenant the place of the shedding of the blood the blood of the lamb somebody say amen the Bible declares that on the day he was crucified, as he said it is finished, and the Roman soldier pierced his side. The Bible says that at that moment, the veil in the temple was torn in twain. Glory to God. Meaning that the hope, the blood of Jesus that was being put at the mercy seat, the that the curtain was torn in twain so that hope may be able to penetrate therein because it is that hope the anchor of our soul that reaches and touches to that which is beyond the veil that's what i was looking for that which is beyond the veil all i'm trying to say here ladies and gentlemen is that you and i are anchored in Christ Jesus, we are anchored. In the blood of the Lamb, we are anchored. In the precious sovereign promise of Almighty God, we are anchored. Now, hope unites us with the finished work. The finished work. You and I are connected to the finished work, the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, because of that hope. Let's begin to wind it out now. Romans 15 and verse number 13. Bible declares now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost look at what the anchor of, of, of the anchor of hope is gonna do in your life number one the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that he may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost and that's the prayer I pray for you today that you and I will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost in spite of the circumstances in spite of the trials in spite of the situations you and i will abide in a hope by the power of the holy ghost he says this is the god of hope and the god of hope the hope that you're holding on to will fill you with joy and peace in believing this is the evidence that you're having hope in christ jesus number one you will be filled by joy in spite of the circumstance number two you'll be filled with peace in believing joy and peace in believing as you believe god for his promise may you abound in hope through the power of the holy ghost now he finishes that verse by saying wherein the forerunner jesus has been made a high priest for us after the order of Melchizedek. Understand that Jesus is the sacrifice, but Jesus is also the high priest. What are we trying to say here? The anchor reaches within the veil, and beyond the veil, there is a priest there that is working and presenting and appropriating the sacrifice. And ladies and gentlemen, that priest is the same yours truly, Christ Jesus. He's not only the sacrifice, he's not only the placement of the whole which is the anchor that reaches within the veil but he is also the high priest glory to God meaning that our anchor which is anchored in those things that go beyond the veil it is not only attached on the blood that causes us to be 
sanctified it is attached to the rock himself christ jesus the messiah glory hallelujah the ancient one from the beginning of time show me my last picture there the raging waves of the sea on that boat that is attached on christ jesus look at that boat i don't know if you can see high up there rather than the anchor going deep down on the sea this picture i picked it up because it demonstrates the the, the expression that i'm trying to give that the boat is anchored right in the cross of jesus because he has become the anchor of our soul the hope that we have in him the trust that we have in him the faith that we have in him he has gone beyond the veil we are anchored beyond the veil we are anchored beyond the foundation of the universe we are anchored in christ jesus himself somebody say amen to that colossians 1 and 27 the bible say to whom god will make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory come on come on come on come on somebody say amen to that he is christ in you the hope of glory as we talk about the abiding triad which is faith hope and love today i need you to understand that your hope the hope you have in christ is the anchor for the soul holding up in christ jesus himself who is christ in us the hope of glory if i may finish with the words of the song that i sang earlier the writer of that song says i mean the anchor holds though the sheep is battered he says the anchor holds when the sails are torn he says i have fallen on my knees as i face the raging sea because my faith is in god and i know that i'm anchored in christ jesus the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world the parts i did not sing have words like these he says you may have journeyed long dark nights out in the open sea sight unknown but he says his eyes are always watching you in other words you're not going without an anchor because god almighty is watching you every day of your life he says dreams could have gone through your hands like grains of sand he says it's in the dark nights that god has proved his love for us for we are anchored and the anchor will always hold because it is holding in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I can't belabor it beyond this. Wherever you go, whatever you hear, on the news, government officials making declarations, neighborhood people dying, and celebrities that you've seen in the news dying, I want you not to be gripped by fear, discouragement, and despondency. I want you to hold on to the hope that we have in Christ. That you will abide because the hope that we have in Christ is the anchor that reaches beyond the veil and it will always hold. Somebody say amen to that. Stand up on your feet right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for that little wonderful word that has been released to us in power and much great grace and glory. Lord, I pray that as we leave this place today, your mercy will be made available. Hope, which is the anchor for the soul, will be made magnificently available to us. Lift your right hand above your head and decree this together with me. Say, Abba, Father, today I thank you I need to hear some faith in your heart. Say, Abba, Father. Today, I make mention of that hope, which is the anchor for my soul. The hope that reaches beyond the veil. The hope which is Christ in me. The hope of glory. May that revelation be made available. May that revelation be forever true in Jesus' mighty name. Now put your hands together as you give him a praise. Hallelujah.